Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to the Book of Acts Now Global Church and School. We are here today with a great message from our pastor, and we are looking forward to great things. We are a church that believes that Yahweh is calling His church to be just like it was at the beginning. It had signs, wonders, miracles. It had the Word of God going forth. It had many great signs and wonders. So we're going to invite Him in today and just ask His will to be done. So worship with us as we praise Him today. <laughs> church that believes that the last days that we're in is going to be great and mighty. He's going to do great works. He is calling His people, His church to that place. We have got to get in that direct path of He has for us today. So as we welcome our pastor, Dr. Jerry Bowers in today, worship with us and we invite you to worship and give praise to Him. Amen. 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 Praise God. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Glad you're here to worship with us today. We're going to be looking at from Acts chapter 6 through 8. Before we get started, I want to just mention to you, you can follow us on bookofactsnow.com. That's our website. Amen. And uh, this service uh, will be live on there uh, each week. Uh, again, it's uh, 2.30 Central Time here in the U.S., and then um, also at 1.30, you can tune in for the Hebrew class. So there's two things you can watch on our site. At 1.30, you can be watching the Hebrew class, and then at 2.30, uh, you can watch this service. So we invite you to join us Amen. for that. Uh, I want to mention that there are several books on the website. One of them is Book of Acts Apostles. And much of what we're preaching on the book of Acts is written there. Of course, you can watch um, our sermons. Uh, they're, they're recorded and then they're uploaded to our channel on YouTube, which is Book of Acts Now Discipleship. And so any of the sermons you hear, you can go and look at those and others on our YouTube channel. But if you would like to read, some people get a lot out of reading uh, and not just listening. Uh, I recommend that book that's on our website, Book of Acts Apostles. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so open your Bibles with me to, um, to Acts chapter 6. We continue our series in the Book of Acts. shows forth the authority and compassion of God to restore man. You see, the physical miracles show forth His power to save and heal and restore man. Reminding us uh, of some of the previous chapters, in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, they prayed when they were restricted from speaking in His name and teaching in His name. And the Holy Spirit fell upon them. The place where they were meeting and praying was shaken by the Holy Spirit. And it says, great grace was upon them all. In other words, great grace fell on the whole city when the Holy Spirit fell. What does great grace look like? Should we expect to see great grace today upon the church? Yes. And if so, what does that look like? In Acts chapter 5, verses 12 and 16, it says, the multitude came to bring the sick people from all the cities where, and they brought them there and they were all healed. In other words, great grace is seen in the great healings that took place. To say that there is no longer any healing that is to be expected in the church is to say we're not expecting great grace because great grace is manifested in healing. Amen. And there are a lot of churches that are functioning today without great grace. We talk about it as a theological concept, but we don't see it as a reality. And the book of Acts Church for today, God wants that reality restored. Can somebody amen. say amen? amen? The Bible talks about the ministry that He gave 
uh, to the church in the book of Acts as being the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians, hold your finger at Acts, and go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Yeshua HaMashiach and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us, you and me, the word of reconciliation. Well, what is that? Well, it has to do with the grace of God. The Hebrew term for reconciliation is atonement, kapar. It means to cover, it's made up of the calf, the pay, and the resh. And what it literally means is to cover with the word of the highest person brings you reconciliation. That reminds me of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If we hear and we confess and believe that He died for us, we shall be saved. But how shall they hear unless someone speaks to them or preaches? The word of reconciliation has to go forth. But let me give you a practical, uh, we'll go back to the book of Acts. Let me give you a practical view of how the apostles shared the word of reconciliation. It means to be covered by Him. Amen. Now, Psalms 91 talks about, I'm, I'm in the secret place of the Most High and under His wings, and the shadow of His wings. You know, the prayer shawl of Talib is actually seen as the wings of God. And so the idea was, in biblical times, if you put this on, when you prayed, or you prayed for someone, These are the wings of God. Amen. And I want to bring you back to the gate beautiful. Peter comes to the gate beautiful. He's been in the upper room, the prayer room. He's been under the wings of God. He just used his prayer shawl that morning. Yes. And now he comes to a man who's uncovered. He's not covered by the righteousness of God. He's not covered by salvation. He's outside the temple. He's not even allowed to be inside. You see, they had the belief that if you were cursed with some kind of sickness or um, handicap like this, it was because God had judged you and you couldn't go into church. In fact, it was so bad that they believed that if, if you had acne, you couldn't sing in the choir and you couldn't participate in the service because you had acne. So imagine this man, for 40 years since birth, he's been on the steps of the temple, but never in the temple. Amen. He hasn't experienced the covering of God. So get this now. Here comes Peter. He's carrying the word of reconciliation. He's, he's been covered under the wings of God. And he comes to this man, and he says, Friend, silver and gold have I none. But such of I have, I give to you. What was he giving to him? He was giving to him the covering of God, the righteousness of God. Yes. He was giving him the acceptance that was denied to him by the church. And so in essence, what he was doing, he was saying, man, look, I'm covering you. See these wings? I'm covering you, friend. Give me your hand. Stand up here under my covering. You're going to be restored and reconciled to the Father today. See, he understood something we don't get. Because we're looking at it from our modern perspective. He was offering him what God had given to, to himself. And so by taking his hand and saying, In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the righteousness of God, who is our covering, and the one who has reconciled us, I tell you, sir, you stand up and be strengthened and healed and restored because his covering lacks nothing. Great grace is with us today, sir. And great grace bears with it its own witness. Be healed and rise up. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. 
We need to reach back and understand and grab onto what they knew and walked in because we can walk in the same great grace. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes. Wow. And now we see in Acts chapter 6, the apostles are concerned about the widows who are being neglected in the distribution. And so they call unto them seven men filled with the Holy Ghost. They set them aside for that ministry. They lay hands on them. They have also received the Holy Spirit, and great grace falls upon them for this calling. And as we looked at last week, Philip begins to preach like the apostles. He's not been to any class to learn homiletics, which is preaching. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he begins to confront their sins and call upon them to repent. And to shut him up, they have to bring some fault witnesses. They bring him for the council. And he takes them to school and goes over the history of the Jewish people and says, you're just like your stiff next fathers who resisted the prophets. You're doing the same thing. For God has raised up a prophet like unto Moses. And you crucified him and you murdered him. And that makes you murderers. Amen. And so they took him out and they stoned him to death. They laid his clothes at the feet of a man by the name of Saul who would later become the Apostle Paul. And then Philip, that goes into chapter 7. And then chapter 8, Philip goes down to Samaria. That's why I want to really pick this up. Let's go to Acts chapter 8, verses 6 to 8. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip. He's only been called to serve widows and to feed them. And hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, for unclean, what were the miracles? Next verse. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were, the right word here would be demonized. <coughs> and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And great joy was in the city. In other words, great grace was being produced. Amen. Wow. They were all healed. Just like the apostles, just like Christ. They were all healed. And then I want to drop down to verse 14. Because now the apostles in Jerusalem, they're hearing about what's happening. And so the apostles go down to investigate all the new converts. And in verse 14, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, that word of reconciliation, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had uh, fallen on none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Yeshua. They laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. It is the receiving of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that releases great grace on the believer. Amen. And, you know, the, there are several instances of this in the book of Acts where people are baptized and they think that's it. And the apostles come along and say, no, you have to have what we might call the second work of the Holy Spirit. The first work is regenerating the heart. The second work is to empower you so that you can go out with the gifts of the Spirit and make Him known with power. Every believer, not just the evangelist. Amen. And there's a boldness that comes. You know, they said of the disciples, they knew they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they knew they had been with Christ, Yeshua. How did they know that? Because they spoke with boldness. Yes, amen. And so they laid hands on them that they might receive. And then in verse 26, Philip gets some further instruction. He needs to be where he's appointed to be and doing what God's called him to do. And the only way you can do that is learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we all need to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, 
along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, this is desert. So now this, in the, you know, the natural sense, this didn't make, didn't make any sense. Who's going to be out there in the middle of the wilderness? And not only that, if you're going towards Gaza, you're going where the Philistines are. These are the sworn enemies of Israel. Why do you want to go into enemy turf and enemy territory in the middle of the wilderness so somebody can cut your throat out in the desert? Look, God may ask you to do things that don't make sense because he has a divine appointment. And he had one for him that was very important. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. So he was a God-fearer. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading from the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, basically, son, this is your divine appointment. Go near and overtake that chariot. And so Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading out loud from the prophet Isaiah. And he said, do you understand what you're reading, sir? He said, how can I understand except someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him in the chariot. And here's a quote from what he was reading. And it comes from Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. He was led as a sheep to slaughter. And as a lamb before his shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And so now Philip explains the death and crucifixion of Christ and how he fulfilled these prophecies and how he was, he was bringing about the kingdom of God in a new way. And to enter this kingdom, you're born again of water and spirit. You're baptized in the water and in the spirit, and you become a part of this kingdom. And so <clears throat> after he explained to him, in verse 36, as they were going down the road, they saw some water. And the eunuch said, well, here's some water. What prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe in all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's all he had to believe to be baptized. There are a lot of churches want to indoctrinate people before they will allow them to make a commitment to Christ. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized. Philip baptized him. And now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so the eunuch saw him no more. My goodness. Mm -hmm. A couple of interesting things. When you're being led by the Spirit with great grace and ministry, God will arrange your travel. Amen. He will get you to where you need to be. God will give you divine appointments to fulfill His purposes. And God may supernaturally just take you somewhere else. Can't you imagine? If you're the eunuch, you're sitting there, this guy appears out of nowhere, explains a Bible passage to you, changes your life, baptizes you, and boom, he disappears. I, he knows it's God. Maybe he thinks that's an angel. Who knows? But it says he went down the road rejoicing because of that encounter. Amen. And guess what? He's a man of great authority. He's the treasure of the queen. He's got a testimony to go back and speak to his people Amen. and affect the whole nation. Just think now, Peter would have argued and said, there's nobody out there but jackrabbits and snakes in that wilderness. I'm not going out there. It makes no sense. But because he knew the voice of God, That's it. he knew how to hear from God, he was willing to be obedient. Amen. You know, the year 2019 is coming up. One of the things that we greatly need is to hear from God for this coming year, individually and corporately. What's God saying to you? What's his priority for your life? Is there somewhere you're supposed to be this year? God tells Margie and I every year when to be in Israel and what we're to do there. 
What's he speaking to you this year? We need to hear that. So New Year's Eve, we're planning on meeting and praying because we want to hear individually and corporately. What's God saying to us Amen. for the new year? So we can get lined up with the times and seasons of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we conclude this section of the book of Acts, I believe that God is sending great grace a book of Acts now. Amen. That we're to be an example, a forerunner of Amen. what the church is to look like in terms of the harvest, participating in the harvest. I want to be honest with you. Sometimes in America, we don't see God moving with great power. I've traveled to nations and preached, and I see the Holy Spirit come with great power. Part of the reason is that there's not a hunger for God in America. We're self-satisfied, our needs are met. But you go to countries where people are desperate and they have nothing, they cry out to God because they know He's the only answer. They don't have doctors readily available. They cry out and ask for prayer for healing and they get healed. I think that's going to change in America. We're going to see God's hand more here. But what I'm sharing with you is, as we travel to other nations and we minister and we see the great grace of God, we're going to bring that anointing back with us. Amen. And see it manifested more here. We saw it when we went to the Philippines, where every person got a touch from God. Everyone was impacted. We're going to see that when we when we're in Africa, because this year that's going to happen. But let's pray individually that we can hear the voice of God. And let me tell you, sometimes it's harder to hear the voice of God. You know, I, I don't want to make it sound like every time I pray it's crystal clear, I hear exactly. Sometimes you've got to get your mind out of the world in order to get it into the presence of God. Does that make sense? Amen. So that means that you've got to take some time to turn off the television. You've got to take some time to be alone with God. Have some worship. Be in His presence. Amen. But sometimes I turn off the worship. And then we ask God, what are you speaking to us tonight? Yeah. What do you want us to know? That we wait in His presence. God sometimes will shock you with a few things. That's often happened to Margie and I. But we're in Bastrop, Texas. God says, you're going to be moving in October. God, where are we moving? Just get ready. So we continue to pray over the course of several months. Get your resume ready. You're moving in October. And finally, as we uh, sought Him, he let us be, let it be known that I was to contact some uh, chaplain positions um, in uh, in Granbury, Texas. And so I did. I had three or four in mind, and he said, "Now only turn in one of them to this agency." I found out later they had been praying for the right chaplain for six months, and they took my resume to the prayer group of the director, and the prayer group said, "Yes, he's the one," and they hired me. But God prepared that. One day when we were praying, we didn't realize our car was going to die on the way to Granbury. It, uh, it ran until we pulled into the driveway where we were going and it died. It was bit by a snake as we were leaving on the right hand, but it, it, didn't, it didn't harm me. I still got the puncture wounds on the hand. The enemy didn't want that move to happen, but we were obedient to God. Amen. And so Margie saw the vision before we moved. We were driving a new white car over a bridge. The second day I was at work, they gave me a brand new white car, a Nissan. And we had to drive over a bridge to go to work. So if, if we will take time, God will give us indications about what's coming, what's going on, so we can align with heaven. It may not be always the full picture. With Philip, it wasn't the full picture. He just knew where he was supposed to be. And when he got there, the Lord said, see that guy over there? Get up close to him. And once he could hear what, was, what the guy was reading, the Holy Spirit's like nudging him, you know, explain it to him. I want this to be that kind of year of great grace for us. That we'll hear from God and be where we're supposed to be, to be used by God. 
Amen. To give a testimony, to give a word, to explain whatever. But God will use us. Sometimes, friend of mine, and I've learned this in doing chapel work, you don't have to have all the answers. We can practice the ministry of presence, which means we're just present with somebody in need, and they receive comfort for the fact we're with them. God has a purpose for everybody here today. Amen. It's my prayer that you'll hear from God. So, Father, as we close this service, we ask that you will bless us, that like Philip in the wilderness, we will hear where we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing. And as a church, we'll know that in advance. And Father God, you will confirm signs, wonders, and miracles. Great grace will be upon us to Amen. make you known, to bring your salvation to mankind. And they will know your compassion Amen. and your great joy. Thank you for blessing us today in Christ Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying for my voice. Thank you.